Hello, class. Today we commence our journey through China's modern political economy by studying the historical background leading to the founding of the People's Republic of China (PRC) in 1949. We will examine the socio-political and economic conditions of China before 1949, the Chinese Civil War, and the formation of the PRC. The century of humiliation, 1839-1949. China's modern history is marked by a period known as the Century of Humiliation, beginning with the First Opium War in 1839. During this time, China underwent a series of unequal treaties, invasions, and concessions to foreign powers. The impact was multi-dimensional, affecting China's territorial integrity, sovereignty, and national psyche. The Qing Dynasty's inability to protect China. Led to internal strife and sparked a desire for modernization and national rejuvenation. The fall of the Qing Dynasty. The internal and external pressures culminated in the 1911 Xinhai Revolution, resulting in the fall of the Qing Dynasty and the establishment of the Republic of China, led by Dr. Sun Yat-sen. However, the republic faced numerous challenges, including warlordism. Foreign imperialism and economic instability. Sun Yat-sen's three principles of the people, nationalism, democracy, and the people's livelihood, aim to address these issues and build a modern, prosperous, and united China. The Chinese Civil War. The Chinese Civil War, 1927-1950, was a pivotal event, pitching the nationalists. Kuomintang or KMT, led by Chiang Kai-shek against the communists, CCP led by Mao Zedong. The ideological and political differences led to a protracted struggle for control over China's destiny. The war, interspersed with the Second Sino-Japanese War (1937–1945), shaped the contours of modern China and determined its future trajectory. The People's Republic of China. PRC formation. On October 1, 1949, Mao Zedong proclaimed the establishment of the People's Republic of China. The founding of the PRC marked the culmination of decades of revolutionary struggle, and the CCP's victory altered the global ideological landscape. The new state adopted socialism as its guiding ideology, and sought to reconstruct China socially, economically, and politically. Initial policies and challenges: the newly established PRC inherited a war-torn and economically devastated land. The government's immediate focus was on unification, land reform, and economic rehabilitation. Efforts were made to consolidate power, suppress counter-revolutionary activities, and establish socialist institutions. A planned economic system was initiated, focusing on heavy industry as the foundation for national development. International relations. In the international arena, China faced diplomatic isolation due to Western non-recognition. The Korean War (1950–1953) was instrumental in consolidating national unity and establishing China as a significant actor in global politics. The Sino-Soviet Treaty of Friendship, Alliance, and Mutual Assistance in 1950 marked China's alignment with the Soviet bloc. Shaping its foreign policy and economic development strategies in the initial years, the founding of the PRC in 1949 was a watershed moment in China's history, marking the end of foreign domination and civil strife. It set the stage for profound transformations in China's political, social, and economic structures. The historical legacies, the revolutionary struggle, and the initial challenges faced by the PRC. Are essential in understanding China's subsequent political economic developments, which we will continue to explore in our next lectures. The Silk Road, exploring the ancient trade routes and their legacy on contemporary international relations, welcomes scholars to another session where we will traverse the intricate tapestries of the ancient trade network known as the Silk Road. This intricate network of trade routes forged connections between the East and West, shaping civilizations, fostering cultural exchange, and establishing early forms of international relations. Origin and evolution of the Silk Road. The Silk Road, conceptualized around the second century BCE, was not a singular route, but a complex network of terrestrial and maritime pathways connecting China to Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. 
its name is derived from the lucrative silk trade. But the commodities exchanged were multifarious, including spices, metals, and precious stones. We will analyze the evolution of these routes, examining how they morphed and expanded, weaving through diverse geographies and civilizations. Cultural and knowledge exchanges. The Silk Road was a conduit for the exchange of cultures, religions, philosophies, and knowledge. It enabled the diffusion of Buddhism, Christianity, and Islam, creating multicultural societies and fostering religious syncretism. Scientific, artistic, and philosophical ideas traverse these routes, leading to enriched intellectual landscapes and the confluence of diverse thoughts. We will delve into specific examples of cultural and intellectual interchanges and their lasting impacts on the civilizations connected by these routes. Economic and political implications. The economic implications of the Silk Road were transformative. It catalyzed the development of cities, markets, and industries affecting the economic structures of the regions it connected. The political ramifications were equally profound, leading to alliances, conflicts, and diplomatic engagements between diverse empires and kingdoms. The Silk Road facilitated the emergence of early forms of international relations, with treaties, trade agreements, and diplomatic protocols being established to regulate interactions between different powers. The Role of Central Asia Central Asia played a pivotal role as the crossroads of the Silk Road. The region not only facilitated trade, but also became a melting pot of cultures, languages, and religions. We will explore the historical significance of Central Asian cities like Samarkand and Bukhara, investigating how they became centers of learning, culture, and commerce, and how their legacies continue to impact the region's geopolitical and cultural landscape. Impact on Art and Architecture The cross-cultural interactions along the Silk Road influenced art and architecture profoundly. Artistic styles, motifs, and techniques were exchanged, leading to the creation of syncretic art forms. Architectural styles and construction methods were transmitted across regions, shaping the architectural landscapes of cities and religious structures. We will explore the artistic and architectural legacies of the Silk Road, analyzing how they represent the amalgamation of diverse cultural elements. The Maritime Silk Road, parallel to the land routes, the Maritime Silk Road connected ports in China, Southeast Asia, South Asia, the Middle East, and East Africa. This maritime network facilitated the exchange of commodities, cultures, and knowledge between coastal civilizations. The exploration of maritime technology, navigation methods, and international maritime trade protocols will be undertaken to understand the complexity and significance of these sea routes in global history. The Silk Road and Contemporary International Relations The legacy of the Silk Road is palpable in contemporary international relations. The principles of mutual benefit, cultural exchange, and peaceful coexistence continue to guide diplomatic engagements and international collaborations. We will analyze how modern initiatives like China's Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, echo the spirit of the Silk Road, aiming to foster connectivity, economic cooperation, and cultural exchanges in the 21st century. The role of multilateralism. The Silk Road symbolizes early forms of multilateralism, with diverse civilizations engaging in mutual interactions. This concept of multilateralism is crucial in today's interconnected world, where global challenges necessitate collaborative solutions. We will discuss how the principles of mutual respect, dialogue, and cooperation derived from the Silk Road can inspire contemporary international relations frameworks to address global issues like climate change, pandemics, and conflicts. Conclusion The Silk Road is a symbol of unity and diversity. The Silk Road exemplifies how unity and diversity can coexist, fostering mutual growth and understanding. It symbolizes the possibility of a shared future, where cultures, knowledge, and benefits are exchanged for mutual prosperity and peace. China's global integration and international influence greetings, everyone. Today, we will delve into China's transformative journey in the international arena. Post-1978, China's economic metamorphosis and strategic international engagements have resulted in its elevated global status and influence. Let's explore the trajectory, implications, and challenges of China's ascent on the world stage. Joining the World Trade Organization, WTO, China's accession to the WTO in 2001 marked its formal integration into the global trade system. This opened up China's market to the world and vice versa, enabling China to become the world's factory. We'll discuss the implications of this membership on China's economy and the global trade dynamics. The Going Out Strategy In the early 2000s, China initiated the Going Out Strategy to encourage its enterprises to invest overseas 
securing natural resources, technologies, and markets. This outward expansion allowed China to extend its economic influence, resulting in a stronger global footprint. Belt and Road Initiative, BRI. The Belt and Road Initiative, launched in 2013, exemplifies China's ambition to forge transcontinental connectivity. Through infrastructural developments and investments, China aims to enhance trade routes, thereby fostering economic cooperation and development in participating countries. Digital Silk Road. China's focus extends to digital advancements, leading to the conceptualization of the Digital Silk Road. This initiative promotes the development of digital infrastructure, e-commerce, and technological collaboration, serving as a medium for China's digital and technological diplomacy. China's role in global governance. China's rising influence is evident in its proactive engagements in international organizations like the United Nations. China's contributions to peacekeeping missions, international development projects, and its role in addressing global challenges like climate change reflect its evolving stance in global governance. Challenges and controversies. China's global ascent has sparked debates and concerns, issues related to trade imbalances, intellectual property rights, territorial disputes, and human rights have surfaced, leading to a complex interplay between cooperation and contention in international relations. Challenges and controversies. China's global ascent has sparked debates and concerns, issues related to trade imbalances, intellectual property rights, territorial disputes and human rights have surfaced, leading to a complex interplay between cooperation and contention in international relations. Conclusion. China's global integration and international outreach have positioned it as an indispensable actor in international relations. The multifaceted engagements ranging from trade to technology and from infrastructure to international diplomacy, signify China's aspirations and responsibilities in shaping the global order. China in the Contemporary Era, a detailed overview of challenges and future trajectory introduction. Welcome back to our lecture series on China's transformative journey. Today we will delve deeper into the contemporary challenges China confronts and the potential future trajectories that it may undertake. The path that China traverses is intertwined with global politics economics and societal norms, making its journey crucial for international stakeholders. Section 1. In-depth analysis of internal challenges. 1. Economic inequalities, urban-rural divide. The economic prosperity witnessed in urban areas contrasts starkly with the conditions in rural locales. This divide manifests in disparities in income, access to health care, education, and public services, potentially leading to social unrest and impacting national stability. Regional disparities. The coastal regions, being the early beneficiaries of economic reforms, have prospered, leaving the interior regions striving to catch up. These disparities can lead to internal migration, pressure on urban infrastructures, and regional tensions. Government initiatives and policies. We will study the various poverty alleviation programs, regional development plans, and redistribution policies initiated by the government to mitigate these inequalities. 2. Demographic challenges. Aging population. With an increasing life expectancy and declining birth rates, China faces a shrinking workforce and a rising dependent population, potentially impacting economic productivity and increasing the burden on social security systems. One-child policy repercussions. The repercussions of the one-child policy have led to a skewed sex ratio and a smaller young population. We will discuss the implications of these demographic shifts on society, economy, and policy reforms. 3. Environmental degradation. Industrial pollution. Rapid industrialization has led to severe air, water, and soil pollution. The health and ecological implications of industrial pollution will be evaluated along with the government's regulatory measures to curb industrial emissions. Climate change commitments. China's role as a major global emitter necessitates significant climate action. We will explore China's international commitments, domestic policies, renewable energy initiatives, and their effectiveness in addressing climate change. Section 2. Examination of External Challenges 1. International Relations and Diplomacy Geopolitical Tensions The South China Sea Disputes, Border Tensions with India, and Relations with Taiwan are significant geopolitical concerns. The strategic implications of these tensions on regional security and international relations will be thoroughly examined. Trade and Economic Relations Trade Tensions with the U.S. and 
and other Western countries, coupled with debates on market access, intellectual property rights, and economic reciprocity, will be explored in detail, analyzing their impacts on global economic architectures. 2. Global Governance and Human Rights, International Norms and Values China's approach to human rights, governance norms, and international law often contrasts with Western liberal democracies. We will engage in a detailed discussion on these dichotomies, their implications on international relations, and the potential for consensus and conflict in international forums. Section 3. Insights into Future Trajectory 1. Innovation and Technological Leadership. Technology and Global Competition. China's endeavors in AI, 5G, biotechnology, and space research represent its aspirations for technological leadership. We will explore the global competition in technology, intellectual property concerns, and the implications of technological advancements on international security and development. 2. Sustainable Development, Green Initiatives, China's Green Development Plans, Eco-Civilization Concept, and Sustainability Goals will be examined. The transition to a circular economy, renewable energy developments, and their impacts on global sustainability efforts will be analyzed. International Collaboration, China's role in international environmental agreements, collaborations on sustainable development projects, and its influence in shaping global sustainability norms will be discussed. 3. China's global vision and international responsibilities, soft power and cultural influence, China's increasing cultural influence through Confucius Institutes, media networks, and cultural exchanges will be studied in relation to its soft power strategy. Multilateral engagements, China's engagements in international organizations, peacekeeping missions, and development aid reflect its evolving international responsibilities. We will discuss China's role and influence in shaping international norms and policies. Conclusion. China's future is integral to global developments. The challenges it faces internally and externally, coupled with its global vision and innovations, are pivotal. The dynastic cycle and societal evolution. A detailed study on the rise and fall of Chinese dynasties and their societal impact. Good day, esteemed scholars. Today we journey through China's historical dynastic cycles, exploring the interconnectedness of dynastic rise and fall with societal evolution, governance transformations, and cultural developments. Understanding the dynastic cycle. The dynastic cycle, a fundamental concept in Chinese historiography, revolves around the patterns of the rise, reign, and decline of dynasties. We will dissect this concept, analyzing the patterns of legitimacy, governance, societal harmony, and eventual decline, and renewal inherent to each cycle. The Mandate of Heaven. Central to understanding the dynastic cycle is the Mandate of Heaven, a divine approval deemed necessary for a ruler to govern. We will probe this philosophical doctrine, examining how it justified the ascent of new dynasties and rationalized the downfall of the old, emphasizing moral governance and the well-being of the populace. Early dynasties, Xia, Shang, and Zhou, delving into the early dynasties provides insights into the formation of Chinese civilization, governance structures, and societal norms. We will explore the archaeological and textual narratives of the Xia, Shang, and Zhou dynasties, focusing on their contributions to political philosophies, societal developments, and cultural innovations. The Qin dynasty, centralization and legalism. The Qin dynasty marked the onset of imperial China, introducing centralized governance and legalist philosophies. Our exploration will encompass the administrative reforms, military conquests, and infrastructural developments of this era, analyzing their impacts on societal structures and governance models. The Han Dynasty, Confucianism and Expansion. The Han Dynasty witnessed the flourishing of Confucianism and territorial expansion. We will study the synthesis of Confucianism with governance, the establishment of the imperial examination system, and the advancements in science, technology, and trade reflecting on their long-lasting influences on Chinese civilization. Period of Disunity. Lessons from Fragmentation. The era of fragmentation post-Han dynasty offers valuable insights into regional diversities, cultural syncretism, and societal resilience. We will delve into the dynamics of regional powers, the emergence of new thoughts and religions, and the societal adaptations and innovations during this period of disunity. The Tang and Song dynasties, cultural pinnacle and technological innovations. The Tang and Song dynasties are renowned for their cultural richness and technological advancements. We will dissect the cultural renaissance, poetic achievements, technological innovations, and economic developments of these periods, evaluating their contributions to the cultural and intellectual heritage of China. The Yuan, Ming, and Qing dynasties, foreign rule, restoration, and last imperial dynasty, the experiences under the Yuan, Mongol rule, the restoration under the Ming, and the final imperial epoch under the Qing are crucial in understanding China's multifaceted history. We will discuss the interactions with foreign powers, the restoration efforts, governance reforms, and societal changes during these dynasties. Societal Evolution, 
and cultural synthesis. Throughout the dynastic cycles, Chinese society underwent continuous evolution, marked by cultural synthesis, philosophical dialogues, and societal rearrangements. We will scrutinize the intertwined developments in societal norms, familial structures, artistic expressions, and philosophical thoughts across different dynasties, assessing their cumulative impact on Chinese society. Reflections on modern China. The historical tapestry of the dynastic cycles provides a contextual framework to comprehend modern China. We will reflect on how the legacies of various dynasties resonate in contemporary Chinese governance, societal values, cultural expressions, and international interactions, exploring the continuities and transformations. In-depth discussions in Q&A, let's engage in enriching discussions and address any queries you might have regarding the intricate web of dynastic cycles and their multifarious impacts on Chinese society, culture, governance, and philosophy. How do you perceive the remnants of these cycles in today's China, and how do they shape the modern Chinese worldview? Concluding remarks and further readings. To conclude, the dynastic cycles offer a kaleidoscopic view of China's rich history, revealing the complexities of its societal evolution, cultural developments, and governance transformations. The recommended readings will provide more nuanced insights into each dynasty's unique contributions and the overarching themes of continuity and change in China's historical journey. Revisiting Historical Frameworks An in-depth exploration of China's philosophical traditions and their impact on modern governance and society today, we delve profoundly into the rich tapestry of China's philosophical traditions and their enduring influence on its modern governance, societal structures, societal norms, and international relations. We aim to dissect how ancient philosophies continue to shape China's policies, both internally and externally, and their implications on its interactions with the international community. China's Philosophical Foundations To comprehend China's contemporary sociopolitical landscape, one must delve into its profound philosophical foundations. China's philosophical traditions are intrinsically linked to its historical developments, providing a cultural and intellectual framework that continues to shape its societal values and governmental strategies. Confucianism and governance Confucianism, with its emphasis on familial piety, moral integrity, and social harmony, has profoundly impacted China's sociopolitical structures. The Confucian stress on hierarchical relationships and moral duties has influenced governance models, emphasizing stability, order, and moral leadership. The meritocratic ideals in Confucianism have inspired civil service structures and educational values, fostering a governance model that values competence and ethical conduct, Taoism and harmony with nature. The Taoist emphasis on harmony with nature and the pursuit of balance has significantly influenced China's environmental philosophies and policies. The Taoist concepts of Wu Wei, non-action, and balance have impacted societal attitudes towards nature, ecological conservation, and sustainable development, inspiring policies that seek to harmonize economic development with environmental preservation. Legalism and statecraft legalism, with its focus on law, statecraft, and political strategy, has played a pivotal role in shaping China's approach to governance and international relations. The legalist emphasis on centralized authority, strict legal codes, and pragmatic statecraft can be discerned in China's political structures and its strategic maneuvering in international politics. Buddhism and Social Compassion Buddhism's journey in China has been transformative, blending with indigenous philosophies and contributing to the development of a distinctive Chinese Buddhist tradition. The Buddhist principles of compassion, karma, and impermanence have enriched China's ethical frameworks and societal norms, fostering values of compassion, altruism, and tolerance within the society. Syncretism Integration of Philosophies the syncretic integration of these diverse philosophical traditions has resulted in a multifaceted and cohesive cultural and intellectual framework. This amalgamation of Confucian moral ethics, Taoist naturalism, legalist political pragmatism, and Buddhist compassion has created a unique philosophical ecosystem that continues to guide China's societal evolution and governmental paradigms. Philosophical Traditions and Modern Policies The resurgence of traditional philosophies in contemporary discourse is evident in China's modern policies and governance. The harmonious society concept resonates with Confucian and Taoist ideals of social harmony and balance. Similarly, the China dream encapsulates aspirations of national rejuvenation and moral revival, reflecting a synthesis of traditional values and modern aspirations. Impact on international relations China's philosophical traditions also permeate its international relations strategies. The emphasis on harmony, balance, and moral leadership reflects in China's diplomatic engagements. Its approach to conflict resolution, 
and its stance on global governance. The principles of reciprocity, mutual respect, and non-interference resonate with traditional philosophies and guide China's interactions with the international community. Contemporary Reflections and Debates Modern China witnesses debates and reflections on the relevance and application of its philosophical traditions. The discourse encompasses reflections on moral values, governance models, societal norms, and China's role in the international community. The dialogue on rejuvenating traditional philosophies in contemporary contexts is pivotal in understanding China's evolving identity and its aspirations in the global landscape. Philosophical Continuity and Evolution In conclusion, China's philosophical traditions are not relics of the past, but living philosophies that continue to evolve and shape the nation's trajectory. They offer a rich reservoir of wisdom, providing ethical, intellectual, and strategic frameworks that influence modern governance, societal attitudes, and international interactions. The, the interplay between tradition and modernity in China is a dynamic process, reflecting the nation's continuous philosophical evolution and its endeavor to harmonize urban and industrial reforms. China's Economic Surge. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we will continue our exploration of China's transformative journey, focusing on urban and industrial reforms post-1978. These reforms symbolize China's endeavors to modernize its urban centers and industrial sector, eventually evolving into a global economic powerhouse. Urban Economic Reforms Initially, economic reforms were rural-centric, but the focus soon shifted towards urban economic reforms. These included decentralizing economic control, reducing state intervention, and introducing market-oriented policies to improve efficiency and productivity in urban industries. State-owned enterprises, SOEs, reform. A major element of urban reforms was the restructuring of state-owned enterprises. SOEs underwent significant changes to enhance their competitiveness, including management reforms, diversification, and partial privatization. The aim was to transform SOEs into profit-driven entities while sustaining their pivotal role in the economy. Special Economic Zones, SEZs. The establishment of Special Economic Zones was a revolutionary step to attract foreign investment and technology. Cities like Shenzhen became hubs for foreign companies, driving rapid industrialization and urbanization, fostering innovation, and creating a model for development. Industrial policy and development industrial policies evolved to propel technology-driven industries. Emphasis was laid on sectors like information technology, telecommunications, and manufacturing. These policies stimulated innovation, attracted foreign direct investment, and established China as a major player in the global industrial landscape. Impact on urban development. The urban and industrial reforms catalyzed urban development, leading to the rise of megacities and urban conglomerates. These urban centers became the driving force of economic growth, innovation, and modernization, reflecting China's aspirations to be a global leader in technology and commerce. Challenges and contradictions. While the reforms resulted in unprecedented growth, they also brought challenges. The increasing income disparity, environmental degradation, and the juxtaposition of market-oriented reforms with political control are critical areas of study to understand contemporary China's complexities. The urban and industrial reforms post-1978 have been instrumental in shaping China's economic trajectory, positioning it as a global industrial leader. The amalgamation of market mechanisms with state control, the rise of urban centers, and the focus on technology and innovation are defining features of China's economic landscape. Q&A and discussion. Now, let's have a discussion. How do you perceive the role of urban and industrial reforms in China's economic transformation? What are your reflections on the interplay between economic liberalization and political control in China? This concludes our lecture for today. For a deeper understanding, please refer to the assigned readings and feel free to reach out with any questions or thoughts. In our next lecture, we will delve into China's integration into the global economy and its rising influence in international relations and global governance.
Deng Xiaoping's Reforms, Rural and Agricultural Reforms. Hello, everyone. Today, we'll be concentrating on Deng Xiaoping's era and the initiation of economic reforms, primarily focusing on rural and agricultural reforms from 1978 onward. Deng's era marked a paradigm shift in China's developmental strategy and international orientation. Background and Context The disastrous outcomes of the Great Leap Forward and the upheavals during the Cultural Revolution necessitated a rethinking of economic and political strategies. In 1978, Deng Xiaoping emerged as China's paramount leader, emphasizing socialism with Chinese characteristics and prioritizing economic development and modernization, rural and agricultural reforms. The first phase of reforms targeted the rural and agricultural sectors. The household responsibility system was introduced, replacing collective farming with individual household farming. It allowed farmers to make production decisions and sell surplus produce in the market after meeting state quotas, thus incentivizing higher productivity. Decollectivization and land contracts. Decollectivization involved dismantling the people's communes and enabling families to contract land use rights. Although the state maintained land ownership, farmers gained autonomy and a sense of ownership, which significantly enhanced agricultural productivity and rural incomes. Township and Village Enterprises, TVEs The rise of township and village enterprises marked a notable development in rural industrialization. These locally owned and operated enterprises played a pivotal role in absorbing rural labor, promoting industrialization and diversifying rural economies. Implications of Rural Reforms The reforms in rural China laid the foundation for the country's economic transformation. Agricultural productivity increased, rural incomes improved, and poverty levels declined significantly. The success of rural reforms provided the impetus for extending reforms to urban and industrial sectors. The Open Door Policy Concurrently, China embraced the Open Door Policy, initiating its integration into the global economy. Special economic zones were established to attract foreign investments and technology transfers. The policy marked China's gradual shift from self-reliance to opening up and engaging with the global market. Conclusion Deng Xiaoping's rural and agricultural reforms marked the beginning of China's transformation into a market-oriented economy. The shifts in agricultural policies, the rise of TVEs, and the open-door policy were instrumental in setting China on a path of rapid economic growth and international integration, which we will continue to explore in subsequent lectures focusing on urban and industrial reforms. Q&A and discussion. Let's delve into a discussion. What are your thoughts on the initial reforms under Deng Xiaoping, particularly focusing on the rural and agricultural sectors? How do you perceive the shifts in policies and their long-term implications for China's development trajectory? That concludes today's lecture. Please review the recommended readings to deepen your understanding of today's topics, and feel free to reach out for any questions or additional insights. I look forward to our next class, where we will continue exploring the economic reforms and opening up policies of China. Socialist Transformation and Planned Economy Welcome back, everyone. In today's lecture, we delve into the immediate years following the establishment of the People's Republic of China, focusing on the socialist transformations and the implementation of a planned economy from 1949 to 1978. Land reform and agricultural collectivization. Post-1949, land reform was a primary focus. The agrarian reforms aimed to redistribute land from landlords to peasants, eliminating feudal land ownership. By 1956, the process of agricultural collectivization was mostly completed, leading to the formation of people's communes. These transformations aimed to reshape rural China economically and socially, fostering a collective spirit and socialist values. Industrialization and the First Five-Year Plan Parallelly, China embarked on rapid industrialization. The first five-year plan, 1953 to 1957, 
drew inspiration from the Soviet model, emphasizing the development of heavy industry and infrastructure. It marked the beginning of China's journey toward industrialization, reflecting the socialist development ideology focused on state-owned enterprises as the economy's backbone. The Hundred Flowers Campaign and anti rightist Movement In 1956, the Hundred Flowers Campaign encouraged intellectual and public critique of the party's policies. However, the subsequent anti rightist movement in 1957 silenced dissent, impacting thousands of intellectuals. These events revealed the tension between ideological conformity and intellectual freedom in socialist China. The Great Leap Forward, from 1958 to 1961, the Great Leap Forward aimed to accelerate economic development and achieve rapid industrialization and agricultural collectivization. However, the policy led to widespread famine and is considered a catastrophic failure, causing millions of deaths and long-lasting impacts on Chinese society and governance. The Cultural Revolution The Cultural Revolution, 1966 to 1976, was a socio-political movement launched by Mao Zedong. It aimed to preserve Chinese communism by purging remnants of capitalist and traditional elements from society. The decade-long turmoil profoundly affected Chinese society impacting education, culture, and individual lives, and shaping political discourse and governance approaches. Economic and political isolation China, during these years, was largely isolated from the global economic and political system, with limited international trade and diplomatic relations. The Sino-Soviet split further accentuated China's isolation, pushing it to recalibrate its foreign policy and economic strategies in the subsequent years. The period from 1949 to 1978 was marked by profound transformations, ambitions, and upheavals in China. The socialist transformation and the pursuit of a planned economy reflect the ideological imperatives and developmental aspirations of the time. The 